Hi, this is Rob again. I'm doing another Quartz Composer tutorial, this time about uh, iterators, which is kind of how you do looping in Quartz Composer. So if you want to see the other tutorials, you can just go to bit.ly slash QC tutorials. That'll bring you to the YouTube playlist. Um, so basically what I want to do is have a text file, which I've got here with just these four lines. I want line one to fade in on the screen and then fade out followed by line two, line three, line four, and just keep cycling. So um, see if we can do that. First, uh, we want the clear patch, of course. And um, sorry, trying to get this. OK, and uh, the, we know we need the iterator. So Basically, uh, this is kind of like a loop, and this uh, iteration's input tells how many times it's going to loop in there. So I probably want to, like I said, I want to get this from a file. So there's going to be a structure of uh, those four items, and uh, I'm going to use my own um, plugin. Uh, if you look down here, it's called um, RDQC Utils, so you can find it on Google Code. And um, it has this patch in there, which is called text file importer. So ideally, the structure would uh, end up in the iterator. And if we want to know how many things are in the structure, we can just do uh, structure count and use that as the number of iterations for the loop. OK, and um, text file URL is, if you look at the, uh, the instructions here, it tells you how to do it. And it's, it, it has to show up as a URL even if it's a local file. So uh, I will type file colon slash slash slash, an extra slash there, users are to our desktop for lines.txt. Okay, if I want to see if this is working, I could just throw an instruction patch and see if there's a um, account showing up. It says zero. So I need uh, the update signal. And if you have private patches turned on, you should have the signal uh, patch, which is pretty handy. And it could just um, basically, every time the, the uh, patch starts, it will um, put out a signal. So if we look now, um, there it is, four lines in there. If I stop and start again, it shows four lines again. So um, we can get rid of that instruction. Looking good so far, this is going to go, uh, this is going to iterate four times. And uh, eventually, we need to pass that data into the iterator as well. Um, so the way that we use the iterator is we actually, you can see it has square edges here. So that means it's something we can double click on and enter into it. As it shows here, there's the root of the patch. And then there's um, the, the root of the composition. And then there's the iterator. So we're inside the iterator right now. The way you use the iterator is to add an iterator variables patch. And you have access now to um, the iteration that you're on, uh, which goes from 0 to um, count minus 1. And then the current position, which is normalized into a 0 to 1 range. So 0, you'd be at the beginning of the loop. 1, you'd be at the end. And then uh, iterations is the total number of iterations that you're, that it's going to go through. So all that will be handy for us. Um, what I eventually want to do is uh, have a sprite show up. And I know I'm going to need to make an image with the string, which is my line one, line two, line three. I'll just connect this stuff because I know how to do it already. Uh, so there's um, there's my image feeding into the sprite. And I will just give the sprite a width of two, which is the total width of the screen. And I do this as kind of just a practice. Like if I want to figure out the height, uh, I may not know that I'm at 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. Um, so the way to figure out the the height, if we know the width is always 2, is um, to just use the aspect ratio. So the way I always do this is uh, if we use the image dimensions patch, feed the image into it. And um, what I'm interested in here is the width. And I'll just split this out as its own thing, makes things a little easier. There's the width, which I know is 2 because I entered it in. All right, right there, 2. And um, I'll just do some math to get the height, which is basically the width divided by the aspect ratio. 
and that gives us the height. So I might have shown this in another video, but this is pretty common practice for me to uh, get a sprite to show up with the right aspect ratio. So now we need the string to show up. Maybe I'll also change some of these. I'll, I'll just leave it all. Um, one thing to know is if you look at the uh, second page of the uh, properties, there's some alignment, which is handy. So we need to get our string. Um, maybe what we'll need to do is, I know we'll have to pick it out of the, um, the structure. So let's go with structure index member so we can get it by using the index number, which we should be able to get from this information. So that member will become the string. And um, this is probably the part where I want to publish the structure. So I'll just leave it as structure. You can see it turns green. And if I go back up to the parent, now I have a structure listed here. So kind of making these connections, already knowing what I need to do. But um, so maybe this isn't the most organic way to lay this out, but hopefully this makes sense. So now I've got my structure, and I'm able to pick an, a member out of it and use that to create a string, which will show up on the screen. I don't know what would show up right now. Oh, look, there's something showing up. So, um, OK. Let's try and figure out how to get the index. That's the next thing. So basically, we could use current index. And whatever index we're on right now, um, you have to imagine this happening multiple times, um, for one for each of, the, uh, each of the items in the structure, or each of the iterations that we go through. Um, so if we look at what this is doing right now, it's basically doing all of them at once. This is kind of the confusing part about uh, iterators. Um, also, it's kind of, I think maybe right now, just changing the font size. Yeah, it makes it look better anyway. Um, so you can see they're all showing up on top of each other, which is a problem. I want them to show up one after the other. And this is not necessarily geared toward having things happen in sequence. It's, it's having them happen multiple times, but they're all happening at once. So how can I get maybe um, only the line one sprite to show up uh, at a certain time and then after it have another one show up and so on? That's what we're looking for. So this is just kind of like old school, um, same thing you would do in any programming language probably, is maybe we'll look at, uh, let's use integrator as a counter. So this is just um, always counting up one number per second. It's going to be a, um, it's going to be a fractional number, but it's still counting basically one every second. And um, what I can do is use mod. So if I say, I'll use some descriptive names here. Let's say, um, uh, I don't know, let's call this seconds, number of seconds, mod uh, the total number of iterations. If that's equal to the current, iteration, it's a little, let's do that, then um, this will return true. So let's feed in these values. Here's the number of seconds that we're at so far. Here's the total number of iterations. And here is our current iteration that we're on. So if that's true, then that will enable the sprite. Let's see what this looks like now. Here we go. It's not in sequence, and I'll leave that for, for you to figure out or another, another tutorial or something, but the structure isn't necessarily in order. Um, so th this, oh, no, well, I don't know. It seems to be going in reverse order. Maybe it is in order. I don't know. <laughs> you can look into that. So that's great, except that I, I also wanted to have them fade in and out. So there's a little bit more that we have to do um, for that. Let's. Well, one th the way we can do that is to, to use RGB color, RGB color, and feed that in as the color of the sprite. But um, what I'm interested in doing is changing the alpha. So I'll leave these at their defaults of 1, 1, 1, and that's white. But uh, alpha will be um, something that has to go up from 0 back down to 0. 
that's what I'm looking for. So the way that we do that kind of thing, you could use, if you look at, um, I think maybe the movement tutorial, I'm not sure which tutorial it is that I did, but uh, there are a bunch of ways to do that. Interpolation is one, you could use timeline. Um, but if we use interpolation to feed in that value for alpha, what we'd get is, um, depending on the settings, a uh, we'd get like a mirrored loop of a, uh, let's say, quadratic in out. I think if we look, here's so here's what it looked like. It'll fade in, and then we have the mirrored loop, so it'll also fade out. So that's the kind of we're looking at completely clear to uh, completely white, and then back down to completely clear. So that's exactly what we need. Um, problem is, you know, even if we got this right, it's a duration of one second, um, that's actually one second to go up. So what we really need is for it to be half a second. So it'll go up from um, zero alpha to one alpha, and then back down within the span of one second. But if we look at this, I think um, this does not necessarily do what we're looking for. Okay, yeah, it does. I kind of feel like it's luck, but eh, maybe that's all we need. <laughs> so uh, if I change this value to um, five, that means it'll take five seconds to go uh, from zero to one and one to two and two to three and so on. Uh, I'd also have to change this so it matches. Um, let's, let's see what it looks like right now. So now you can see it's, okay, sorry, if I change this to five, that means it will do five numbers in the span of one second. So what I actually want is probably, if I do 0.2, that means that it'll take uh, five seconds to change a number. So now what we've got is they're out of sync. This is happening every uh, fifth, sorry, every five seconds, and this uh, fading in and out is still happening every one second. So I'd have to change this to correspond. Uh, and it's not five, it's um, 2.5. Aha, so now we can see it's out of sync. So there are probably different ways to solve this, but um, I'd say what we probably need is to have them both uh, running off of the same um, same clock in a way. So every time we trigger this sprite to be enabled, it'd be great if the fading started up then. And one way we can do that is to use a uh, stopwatch and just say uh, every time this changes to true, in other words, we're gonna enable the sprite, Let's start the stopwatch. You also have to reset it. So we're gonna reset it to zero and start it at the same time. Let's, this. And um, so how do we feed time into here? If you um, look at some of the other tutorials, it'll tell you about using time base external. So instead of starting when the patch, when the composition starts, it'll um, use uh, stopwatch as its clock. So let's see if that works. Um, we, we have to stop and start it again. So it looks like it's working. Okay. Um, at this point, you could do things like change the way that it uh, fades in and out. Let's say it was linear. It's going to be a lot less interesting. Eh, maybe that's what you want. Um, but, you know, one other thing we could do is the fact that we have to change both of these uh, is kind of obnoxious. If you look at this one, it's, uh, the, its value is 0.2, and this one is 2.5. So maybe um, we could set this up to where actually you change the value up here at the top, and it does the math to figure out how to um, make it correct for both of those. Uh, I would say, um, well, we're interested in this value. Let's see if we can just... Say we're going to use a mathematical expression. If we feed in a number like one, um, well, actually, right now it's taking five seconds, right? So we want if we if we we have 0.2 here for five seconds, that means uh, we'd have to hang on. Yeah, that means we'd have to use. 
probably 1 divided by a. And that will become the value. And then um, for this one, our value is 2.5. So I think our expression there would be probably just a divided by 2. We'll use that as my duration. And then um, what I'd like to do is probably, how can I do this? No, I think if I split this and then have that feed to both of these at the same time, I can publish this input as, uh, like, let's call it interval. OK, so let's look at this now. If the interval is 5, what we'd end up with is uh, that number coming in here, getting divided by 2, and that becomes 2.5. So that seems right. And then it, uh, it would also be 1 divided by 5 here, which becomes 0.2. So that seems correct if we look at it. This is um, going to have to stop and restart so everything's in sync. Okay, so that seems correct. And if we go back and just change this to something like uh, 1, hopefully we'll see uh, everything fading in and out one second. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. And sorry it took so long. I'm a little sluggish right now. But uh, I think um, that kind of covers iterators. If you want to look for a, um, another more complicated uh, example of that if you go to new from template and choose graphic animation um, you'll see a uh, an example there with clouds this uses iterators but in a more complicated way so that's it um, post any comments people have been watching these um, videos so it's a good chance that somebody will have some answers if you post questions thanks